Well, my name really is Meadow, but my first name isn't Marcia. It's Veronica. I'm 19. Question, how did the girl make her leap to the footlights? Answer, she was born in Passatic, New Jersey, and up to a year ago, she got the right to breathe by pushing Nabisco's in Marcel's tea room in Trenton. She started going with a guy named Robbins, a singer in the Trent House Cabaret, and he got her to try a song and dance with him one evening. In a month, we were filming the supper, well, we were filling the supper room every night. Then we went to New York with my with meet my friends letters thick as a pile of napkins. In two days, we landed a job at the at divineries, and I learned to shimmy from a kid at Palais Royal. We stayed at uh, divineries six months until one night Peter Boyce Wendell, the columnist, ate his milk toast there. Next morning, a, mo a poem about marvelous Marcia came out in his, mar in his newspaper, and within two days, I had three vaudeville offers and a chance at the midnight frolic. I wrote Wendell a thank you letter, and he printed it in his column, said that the style was like Carlyle's, only more rugged, and that I ought to quit dancing and do North American literature. This got me a couple more vaudeville offers and a chance as an ingenue in a regular show. I took it, and here we are. He, and here I am, Omar. When she finished, they sat for a moment in silence, she draping the last skeins of a Welsh rabbit on her fork and waiting for him to speak. Uh, let's get out of here, he said suddenly. Marcia's eyes hardened. What's the idea? Am I making you sick? No, but I don't like it here. I don't like to be sitting here with you. Without another word, Marcia signaled for the waiter. What's the check, she demanded briskly. My part, the rabbit and the ginger ale. Horace watched blankly as the waiter figured it. See here, he began. I intend to pay for yours, too. You're my guest. With a half sigh, Marcia rose from the table and walked from the room. Horace, his face a document in bewilderment, lay a bill down and followed her out up the stairs and into the lobby. He overtook her in front of the elevator, and they faced each other. See here, he repeated. You're my guest. Have, so have I said something to offend you? After an instance of wonder, Marcia's eyes softened. You're a rude fella, she said slowly. You don't know you're rude? I can't help it, said Horace, with a directness she found quite disarming. You know I like you. You said you didn't like being with me. I didn't like it. Why not? Fire blazed suddenly from the grey forest of his eyes. Because I didn't. I formed the habit of liking you. I've been thinking of nothing else for two days. Well, if you... Wait a minute, he interrupted. I've got something to say. It's this. In six weeks, I'll be 18 years old. When I'm 18 years old, I'm coming up to New York to see you. Is there some place in New York where we can go and not have a lot of people in the room? Sure, smiled Marcia. You can come up to my apartment. Sleep on the couch if you want to. Can't sleep on couches, he said shortly. But I want to talk to you. Why, sure, repeated Marcia. How, in my apartment. In his excitement, Horace put his hands in his pockets. All right, just so I can see you alone. I want to talk to you as we talked up in my room. Honey boy, cried Marcia, laughing. Is it that you want me to kiss? Is it that you want to kiss me? Yes, Horace sh almost shouted. I'll kiss you if you want me to. The elevator man was looking at them reproachfully. Marcia edged towards the grated door. I'll drop you a postcard, she said. Horace's eyes were quite wild. Send me a postcard. I'll come up any time after January the 1st. I'll be 18 then. And as she stepped into the elevator, he coughed en enigmatically, yet with a vague challenge at the calling, and walked quickly away.